Hey, hi, hey, hello, how are you? Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you are doing well. Uh, in this video, we're doing a tier list, a ranking, because I have a handful of them out there now in my review catalog. I thought I would come on here and, and rank uh, my zero out of tens. How would I rank them from S tier to F tier? Now, uh, some of you may be looking at this and thinking, Anthony, how are you going to rank a bunch of albums that you've given a zero to, the same score to? But uh, listen, we, we will find, find a way. way. You know, let's just think about zero as like less of a concrete number and more of like a state of being, you know? And within that state of being, there can be a different hierarchy. With that conceptuality in mind, let's uh, get into it, starting with, I think, uh, my most recent 0 out of 10, Babam. Uh, it's the new Tones and I album, Welcome to the Madhouse. I had a pretty uh, aggravated, unhappy time listening to this record, for sure, for sure. And uh, I think it is absolutely, like, awful. I think uh, it's impossible, at least for me, to sit through, at least, you know, for the times that uh, I had to, I did. But outside of the context of needing to review this, I'm not really sure I would be able to, like, you know, voluntarily sit through this entire LP. If you're into this and you like it, I would respect that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, into this at all. I can't even find it to be bad in like a funny or a somewhat entertaining way. And uh, while it is a spectacular failure, in my view, it's not a failure for having taken some like incredible risk or having done something super weird that uh, even though it, it may have failed at it, uh, is still respectable for like at least trying. To me, again, this record is like every pop stereotype of the last 10 years, uh, just distilled down into this track list and then uh, handed over with subpar production, uh, tacky instrumentation, all around bad songs, and some of the worst singing to have ever hit the mainstream period, and uh, that's what this record is in a nutshell. I would put it solidly in uh, uh, the E or the F category, you know, uh, let's, uh, it, it, it can straddle both of them. I don't care, that's, that's where it sits for me. Following this, we have uh, the legendary Speeding Bullet to Heaven, uh, here we go, Kid Cudi. Uh, with his uh, transition into grunge on this. I gave it a zero out of 10 when it came out. Uh, the repetitive instrumentals, the lackluster vocals, the Beavis and Butthead sketches, the occasional questionable lyric as well made this album uh, quite a ride to sit through. Uh, but honestly, like in my years since having given this a zero, I have heard music that uh, uh, is is worse or like hits worse in different ways. I've, I've heard a variety, a larger variety of awful out there. And uh, after having done that, I can at least like respect that Kid Cudi was trying to do something kind of weird and somewhat experimental on this record. Again, uh, even to the degree that that is the case, there are the elements of it, like again, those Beavis and Butthead skits that like completely... Uh, <laughs> almost cancel all of that out. Yeah, Speed and Bullet to Heaven in many respects is, uh, in my view, still a mess. It's still a mess, but it's a respectable mess. And I appreciate that even though uh, uh, it's uh, not my cup of tea, that Kid Cudi tried and he put it out and he put it out unflinchingly, knowing that it was going to probably get like some serious backlash from his audience, which it has, and uh, uh, just continued on with his career as if it didn't freaking happen. He just continued on as if like, okay, that was my thing. That was my phase. I did it. I own it. Uh, I appreciate the record. I'm glad I did it. And uh, I moved on. And, uh, and, and that's, and that's my speed and bullet to heaven. Uh, I could put it in, in the B category. It's like a respectable bad. Here we go. Chance the rapper, Chicago's own, uh, coming through with the big day, which, uh, was a wonderful failure of sorts. Wow. Th this, this is still to this day, a mind boggling disappointment. Like chance was so on, the verge of coming out with an excellent LP and uh, I think, you know, uh, dropping one of the best 
records uh, of any artist from his generation. And instead, we got this. And I think if this record reflects anything, it's the significance of just like not uh, bloating your records up with uh, one awful song after another just to fill up space, just to fill up time. Uh, it's all, it also illustrates the significance of not bogging your album down in too many inappropriate features that either don't shine or don't appeal to your audience or don't complement the song. This record also features some of Chance's worst, worst, worst uh, writing ever like period the bars on this thing are awful i guess to wrap it all up uh given that chance the rapper at the time that he dropped this lp was one of the biggest and most respected and most vied after names in the industry i don't know how he didn't end up with better and more creative interesting production on this one either uh this thing is just like uh, the disappointment of disappointments when it comes to uh, popular releases of the last decade. There are spots of it that I guess are more tolerable than others, but it still doesn't take away from at least my perception that there's not a single song on the project that is enjoyable from start to finish. I would put it like in uh, the, the D column. It's obnoxious, it's annoying, it's disappointing, and um, you know, I, I don't even find it to, to be that in an entertaining way. Okay, then finally we have one more zero to get in here. We're uh, gonna drop in Green Day's Father of All Motherfuckers, where the band suddenly decided that they were going to go like uh, sports rock, arena rock, and put out some of the corniest and most unappealing songs of their career ever. It sounds like they kind of are or are trying to have fun, but uh, it's absolutely no fun at all. And it just sounds like a bunch of boomer beer bellies uh, baking out in the sun with beer hats on and, and that sort of thing. It's a horrendous and very unappealing record that I think in many ways even goes against like the punk spirit of the band's catalog. There's absolutely like nothing rebellious or thrilling about this. It just sounds like, again, just, just just awful baseball rock. The band isn't even really all that good at that. A lot of the vocal takes aren't that great either. Billy kind of swaps out his trademark vocal stylings for uh, some that uh, are just feel like a, a corny put on. It's it's a very unappealing record and, and annoying in many respects. So there you go. Those are my zeros. But uh, hold on. Wait a second. Oh whoa! Oh my gosh! Oh, whoa, 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 hey, whoa there. Uh, now I'm gonna start dropping in select not goods and generally awful albums that people uh, uh, know because I've given them very negative reviews. <laughs> Here we go, Corey Feldman, Angelic to the Core. In my opinion, when it comes to awful records of the past decade, uh, Angelic to the Core is, in a word, a classic. I feel like it reinvents bad. It is uh, so bad that in many respects it is entertaining and uh, I respect the hell out of it for uh, being that. I think uh, it's gonna take a long time to hear an album that is as gloriously and as creatively and as versatilely bad as uh, Angelic to the Core is. Corey Feldman, I think, is just like a god uh, for, for dropping this record, to be honest. I'm going to put it in the S tier. I'm going to throw in some other ones that have gotten not goods over the years. You will notice, though, as I go through this video, uh, we're not going to have AJR. No AJR in this video. I feel like uh, we should be a little nice to AJR in this video and just kind of pass over AJR in this video and move on to other things. Boop. Justin Bieber's Changes uh, gave this one a not good because it is in fact not good. Some of the worst pop music of the last decade on this one, especially Yummy. But the entire LP isn't uh, as awful as that song is. Uh, generally, it's just a very bland, boring record that tries to fuse very spacey pop and R&B elements together. Uh, and the effect is uh, just sleep-inducing, uninspired, and uh, about as exciting as dipping a, a slice of Wonder Bread into warm water and then taking a bite out of it. Next one here, we have Lil Dicky, I'm Brain, where Lil Dicky is annoyingly rapping uh, in a series of tracks where it's kind of like an ongoing dialogue 
with with him with his brain with this brain character he's come up with uh it's cool that little dicky has uh seemingly moved on to other things and he uh isn't so much focusing on doing crap like this anymore uh but this is a supremely annoying little ep and um unlikable in every way shape or form i don't get how people find at least little dicky's music to be funny. His writing and Dave and all of that, I feel like is a separate conversation. You know what I mean? But like, as far as the music goes and the humor he tries to incorporate in his music, it's just really absolutely a no. It's probably like a, a decent E. Boop! God smack when legends die. I feel like, uh, as, as far as like the old school of new metal goes, not that, not, you know, maybe sort of the newer artists out there are kind of carrying the torch for the sound, but as far as like the old school of new and alternative metal goes, this record was really like, like the death rattle of the, the genre, at least for me, because like, this is bottom of the barrel shit, guys. This is like the worst uh, written, produced, and most cliched record that I think we're ever going to get in this genre when it comes to artists who helped popularize it. Once more, uh, Sully is about as uh, boring a vocalist as he's ever been. He's just kind of got that, you know, the, those those two or four tricks that he does. The you know, it's it's like a, a hyper aggressive Eddie Vedder, but like uh, even worse. The guitars and drums just sound absolutely awful. Lyrics are weird. It's absolutely just like soulless, tuneless, uh, new metal leftover trash. It's like when you've, uh, you know, left a sandwich in the fridge for too long, like a five month old sandwich and it's just moldy. Uh, and you just kind of pull the mold off of it and you take a bite out of it anyway. That's what this record feels like. All right. Of course, uh, we couldn't do a video without, uh, you know, mentioning, uh, the boy nav reckless, which was my first, uh, nav, uh, <laughs> not good review, <laughs> which I, I still think this thing stands as, a. Uh, Nav's uh, worst, if not one of his worst projects, because uh, everything that um, makes Nav's music awful, I think, is really distilled on this LP, where production boring, vocal soulless, uh, bars hilariously bad, every song sounds nearly the same, it's so one-dimensional, it's so one-note, it's so just like robotic. I just don't even feel like I'm listening to a human. It sounds like uh, it's generated by artificial intelligence, honestly. I'm a little more convinced that he is not a robot that was designed by the CIA on his latest material, uh, as his vocalizations have varied up maybe just a tad, and he has dropped you know, a song or two uh, here and there that are okay. But uh, yeah, Reckless over here is about as soulless Again, as I think uh, a lot of modern trap and mellow trap gets. Beep. Lil Xan, total Xanarchy. Uh, this thing is one of the creakiest and weakiest <laughs> rap and trap records of the past decade. I just don't get how we as a society allowed this uh, record to happen. I think it, uh, you know, honestly... Uh, kind of uh, holds up a lot of the negative stereotypes of, uh, you know, this particular strain of this genre. When you hear people talking down on hip hop music and specifically modern hip hop music and trap music and a lot of that stuff that appeals to the youth, they're calling it mindless and mumbly and this and that and pointless. And, and total Xanarchy is actually that. That's not the case for uh, a great deal of the stuff that's out there. But uh, with total Xanarchy, yeah, that is, that is it. That is literally it. You, you get nothing on this record. You get nothing. You can really give this album everything that you can. You can listen to it endlessly. You can repeat it over and over and over. You can dive into it as deeply as you possibly can, but it will give you nothing back. You'll die of thirst before this record even gives you a drop of the water flying off of Lil Xan's body. Awful. A wee bit funny at points, but uh, awful. I would put it in the E. All right, next we have uh, the boy Eddie Sheeran with his number six collaborations project. I feel like this album is uh, the musical equivalent to really awful speed dating. Uh, because we have Ed collaborating with a bunch of people who he either shouldn't be collaborating with or just absolutely has no chemistry with whatsoever for one awful uninspired song after another. I'm just going to have to uh, put this in the D column for uh, being bland and occasionally offensively bad. Boop. Imagine Dragons Origins over here. Uh, yeah, this record has some of the worst and most unlistenable production of any rock or 
pop album of the past decade, if you could even call it either of those. I really don't know, because to me, Imagine Dragons just kind of sounds like uh, reverse industrial music where it's harsh, it's unappealing, it's a reflection of the ugly world we live in, the modern societal and sonic dystopia that so much industrial music like teases toward and um, in, in so many ways predicts. That's literally what this record is. It's, it's uh, the, the horrible modern era that we've been told would arrive here in the flesh. With that being said though, it's still not the worst thing I've ever heard, I guess. So uh, there you have it, uh, my zeros and some key, very popular not goods. That's gonna be it for this video. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, let me know what you think of some of these records. Where would you rank them? And uh, are some of them your favorite albums of all time? If they are, I would love to hear it in the comments for sure, for sure. Uh, you're the best, mwah, forever.